Hi, everyone. What you see on this picture is actually not a mere childish scribble. It's much more than that. And it has a whole story behind it. But to understand this story, I'd like to bring you back 60 years ago. 60 years ago, the structure of DNA was discovered. Then, thanks to that, we can understand its, its functions, how we could use it to create new ones. And in 60 years, biology has made big bounds and leaps. Modern biology was born 60 years ago, but today we're able to understand a lot of different biological processes. So well that we can use them, we can modify them for technological purposes. But what we are living right now for biotech, actually it makes me think of the 70s for computers. In the 70s, computers were very large and complex machines that were manufactured for corporate-specific functions. But they were a group of amateurs, of hackers, that reclaimed this technology. And it is they who created the personal computing. And if in the 20th century we hack computers, in the 21st, we hack biology. This movement of reappropriation of biotech is called DIY bio, for do-it-yourself biology, or biohacking, or garage biology. Biohackers, they gather inside biohacker spaces where they can share knowledge and equipment. And we can find biohacker spaces everywhere on all continents, like here, for example, in France, in Ireland, in the US, or even in Syria. And this is the map for all known active biohacker spaces in the world. As you can see, they are quite numerous. And this number is growing almost every month. But why is this global trend, why is this global movement of do-it-yourself biology? Well, first, there is one answer to take from the global frustration we have today in the current system. This is a graph showing you the average age for a young scientist to get his first grant for independent research. It's getting older and older. It's even crazier to know what, that actually Darwin and Einstein may have their, made their main discoveries before the age of 30. The bio is interesting for many, many things, but especially for its values. First of all, democratization. Here, the idea is to say that biology belongs to all of us. It's something that is too much important to only be left in the hands of professionals. It is something that we can reclaim also, that we must, actually. Interdisciplinarity. Interdisciplinarity is a word, is a key word very much used in the cycle of academics. But they never really succeeded in implementing it. But hackers did, because it's, it's natural for us to work together in neutral spaces. Citizen counterpower. Biotech is more and more everywhere in our, in our society. And if we want to take this technology and that she brings with her with positive impacts, we need the society to learn what it has to propose and what is the implication of using such technology. The language of DNA is quite harsh, but I believe it's something that we should learn as a second language, as a common language. Innovation. Today, current paradigm for biotech is that it's too expensive or too complicated to do any fast prototyping. Why should one wait to get a PhD or why should one wait to get a million dollars on his bank account to set up a lab and experiment his own ideas and own project? Open source. If we, here we are really in a collective intelligence effort. It's, we are speaking of a community. 
And the best way to gather innovations and technology together in order to advance faster is to make them open source, is to make all those technologies open source. Because the way to advance faster is just to take what your neighbors have done better than you. Ethics and responsibility. This is very important. And almost three years ago, biohackers did something that no academics did ever before. They gathered all over the world, and they worked together to create the first code of ethics for biotechnology and biohacking. What academics couldn't do, biohackers did. Again. Now I'm going to, to talk about something I know very well, uh, and to, exp to explain you what is really a biohacker space. And for that, I'm going to take as an example La Paz. La Paz was founded three years ago. And first of all, it was an experiment. At that time, I was starting my PhD in synthetic biology, and DIY Bio was just starting to appear as a movement, global movement. It was proposing uh, this idea of doing biology outside the world of institutions. And I like very much this idea, as I experienced myself a lot of frustration in my career. So I went to, to look for solutions to make a zero-euro laboratory, because we didn't have any money. So how do we make a zero-euro laboratory? Well, you don't pay anything. It's easy. So how do you don't pay anything? Well, you get into a squat. You don't pay rent, neither water or electricity. And then you get all your equipments for free. LAPA has, has an entirely equipped lab, modern biology lab, where you have for more than 300,000 euros worth of equipment, all that for free. Why? Because labs get rid of a lot of equipment. There is consumerism. And this consumerism is a failure in the system that we use, that we have actually act for our own benefit. So this is where La Paz is. This is the current location. And this is how, what La Paz looks like today. In La Payas, what we do? We give you the theoretical skills to understand what is biotech. We give you the experimental skills to do your own experiments, to ask your own questions. For example, here, this is a DNA barcoding workshop. DNA barcoding is a powerful technology to be used to analyze genetically a sample. It can be used, for example, to know what is the animal origin of your meat? In fact, it can tell you if your lasagna is beef or horse. And to do that, normally you will ask a professional lab, it will ask you 300 euros, something like that, and you will get an answer after three days. What we did is to make a solution, just a method, that's only costing three euros per sample and takes a whole afternoon. So you can come with your own food and analyze it at the lab. We do environmental monitoring. We experiment. We let you experiment. We debate. I'm happy to announce that after almost three years of experiment uh, in a squad, where actually it went very successfully, what we created, a hub for innovation, a free hub of innovation, it's a hub for free experiments. Thanks to the City Hall of Paris, we're going to move out of the suburb to get into the central Paris. And yeah, we're going to shake it. And Paris is a big territory for students. And as we all know, students are the major population where um, frustrations gather. So we're going to go from that to that. Not bad. This is going to be the first ground and the sub-level ground. So it's 
getting closer to what we had before, so we're not completely uh, disturbed. Um, it's going to be huge. It's almost 750 square meters of pure freedom to experiment yourself, to experiment with your own ideas. So we expect a lot from this opportunity for you. But how, do you, how are we going to equip this whole institute, let's say, because this is going to the size of an institute? Again, we hack the system. We hack this failure for the, for the lab to not know how to recycle properly their own equipment for the consumerism. So we created a tool for the community to help us gather all the equipment from all the labs in France. It's a logistic, logistic tool. We call it like campagne de Bioschiner, which is like lab equipment, antiquing. And it's fairly efficient. Thanks to that, we are able to create links between La Payas and all the labs in France. And if you want to participate, you can just go to this link. Um, this tool is going to be useful not only for us, but for actually all the future biohacker space that wants to exist in France and abroad. This is an amazing opportunity to create free labs. So, as we got a lot of demand to help people actually creating biases in their own towns, we decided to create a program of ambassadors to incubate those persons and to help them create biases in their own town. And I'm happy to announce that we already have two successful uh, candidates in Lyon and Bordeaux. So if yourself want to create your own payas, just ping us and we'll help you. So what, what about innovation in those spaces? Bas the basic thing here is to bring down the cost to ac of access to the equipment, of the, to the tools. So instead of only getting old equipment, people are actually innovating, creating new ones that are less expensive, but the equipment that are hackable, people that can change, make, evolve it. For example, this PCR machine. PCR machine is a central piece of equipment. It enables you to analyze DNA. It normally costs around 5,000 euros, but this open PCR project made it to for 500 and you can make it yourself from spare parts. I like this project too. Dutch by hackers created a tool to analyze malaria. It's a diagnosis machine. And it costs less than 500 euros. As you can see, it, the first prototype is fairly DIY as it, as it is in a shoebox. Now this is the next prototype. And they're going to test it on the field in Africa this summer. Those two guys are engineers from Sony. They work at La Payas, and they experiment what they call biodegradable electronics. Biodegradable electronics is made of biomolecules that are biodegradable, but that have uh, semiconductive properties. But to work with semiconductors, you need to work in neutral atmosphere. And instead of buying a complex, expensive, commercial glove box, they made them themselves one using an IKEA box, and it was perfectly fine. This is a graphical designer that works with slime mold. Slime mold is a unicellular organism that likes to go towards food, and so if you put the food in a very strategic place, then you can actually constrain the path of the organism and create patterns. And he created letters with that. He created a biological graphical font. What you see here is bacterial cellulose. It's a cellulose made by bacteria that grows in basically water, some tea, and sugar. It's almost a spontaneous generation. And um, what you can do with that, um, it's pretty interesting. For example, the designer, Susan Lee, she creates fabrics. Here we are. So we arrived to the end of our little story. To help you understand what this picture means, I'm going to give you a hint. It shares something 
with this lot of ground. Helpful, isn't it? The answer is actually in my pocket. It's this petri dish. In this petri dish are bacteria, and bacteria that produce blue pigments. To tell you the whole story, it started as a crazy idea I had with a designer. He wanted to create a pen that would produce its own ink. Instead of having a cartridge, it has a bioreactor, and inside the bioreactor you have bacteria, the bacteria produce pigments. You have to feed the bacteria, so you have to feed the pen. It was crazy, but we'd say it was doable. So we went to look for bacteria that would be non-pathogenic, that could produce a lot of pigments that would have a nice color. It should be easy to grow. The pigment should be non-toxic. And the pigment should be water-soluble, to be used as an ink. Actually, we found one. Incredible. And uh, we found only one, actually. And this bacteria is growing in the soil of South America. So here you have it, your link. And this bacteria was basically waiting here in the soil to be discovered. And with this, we could create, actually, in only two months of work at La Payas with designers and biologists, a stable ink. And what's amazing with this ink is that it actually can change color. From blue, it can turn to red or to green, or to yellow, or even in between. Because we were amazed by how easy it was to create such an ink, to grow your own ink. We work for, we created a workshop. We made another experiment. We went to the Science Gallery in Dublin for a week, and uh, we proposed a workshop to pass by. Uh, to visitors, and we propose them to grow their own ink during after one hour. And we're amazed by the results. They actually will do it perfectly fine without uh, lab settings. The whole point of this workshop was actually to bring biology outside the lab. It's not only biohacker spaces. It's doing biology in your kitchen. And because, again, it was so easy that we decided to uh, create and go further and create a commercial kit and uh, for everybody to try to grow their own ink at home. And I'm happy to announce that we'll be commercializing that kind of kit in two months through a crowdfunding campaign. So be in touch with that and, uh, and experiment what is clearly here, a new kind of biology. What's here, the, the global reach of this project is not only making ink, not only growing your biological ink. It's actually much bigger than that. This ink is non-toxic, is biodegradable. When actual ink, current ink, is extremely toxic, expensive, is a high pollutant, basically. So here, it actually, the question of bioproduct, of bioproduction, what is today the place of bioproduction in our society? What if we could actually use bioproduction to produce any kind of molecules or, bio or materials? We live in a society that has, that faces, enormous problems with the way it uses matter and recycle it. We, we need to do effort, to make efforts not only on how, we, we, how fast and, and better we recycle, but on also on what kind of materials we use. So we need to use better materials that are biodegradable themselves. And for that, we need to use biological processes. And the whole idea is actually to take what you produced and bring it back to the cycle. The planet Earth is like a spaceship. It's a closed space. It has limited matter and energy inside. You don't want to waste it. So 
in order to make it easier to go toward this mission of bringing bioproduction as a tool for citizens and for society in general. We decided actually to, ta to target a specific tools here that is essential for bioproduction, which is a bioreactor. Bio bioreactor is a, is a machine that enables bio biomatter, biomass to be controlled so that it can perform bioproduction efficiently. Bioreactor bio are expensive, so we made it cheaper. This is an early prototype we made at La Payas. Normally, it costs about 20,000 euros. We made one that costs less than 500. What, what we see is that it's, this is going toward um, a trend we already know. Our society is giving us more and more autonomy and responsibility. And nowadays, we have enormous power to manipulate data. We have today new tools to actually manipulate physical matter and prototype objects. What if tomorrow we had a third technology that would enable us to prototype and use biomass to create any kind of molecule at home? Being biohackers, for me, it's being a pioneer, a pioneer of humanity. You're here to test yourself. You're here to test new things, to innovate. You're here to not follow the ground space, but to take alternative ones. And the best way for you to do that is to reclaim what you, what you already have, what's already yours. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, so, yeah, many questions from the Twitter. Uh, but one of them is about the um, universities. Universities are obviously doing uh, research, but they have a different approach. Are they doing it wrong, or how can they learn something from the kind of dynamic that you have at uh, La Payas? So, first of all, um, you need, you need to, to know that if you want to be successful in a project, you better have all the tools necessary at your, uh, available and all the skills necessary too. When you go, for example, to, let's say, I don't know, MIT or Harvard, you go with your ID, with your project, well, you know that you're going to find everything you need on place, right? So that's how you get creative, because you don't have to worry about those things. What you wanted to, to create in La Payas is such a mind framework where you know that you can, be, you can do whatever you, want, whatever you want, with whoever you want, and whatever you want. So you can work with anybody, and you can actually address those mm -hmm. problems that you cannot resolve yourself to other people. And academic setups, academic labs, are not really prepared for this kind of permeability between mm -hmm. labs mm -hmm. and uh, between disciplines. And that's what actually is making the innovation slower, I think. Mm -hmm. And uh, La Paz was really a way to experiment this kind of open innovation process. And I think we proved that it was successful. So speaking about potential partners, you, you showed this map of uh, France and Europe where you show different partners. How does it work if you have like, uh, a comp private company or an academic institution and they want to work with you? How do they do that? So we... The new space in Paris uh, is going to be dedicated to, uh, towards f for, for innovation. But a new kind of innovation, as we, uh, as we showed, is an innovation where we can gather people from different uh, disciplines, different backgrounds, and professional partners. The idea is that how do you bring, using La Payas as a hub, neutral zone, to bring people that normally do not work together? Like, uh, for example, if you want to work efficiently towards, let's say, new solutions for diagnosis, uh, open source uh, hardware for medical application, then you better actually bring in young engineers, people from medicine, and partners that have actually the financial means to, uh, to help you do that, 
partners that have the, the, the skills also, and partners that, have, that are on the field to test your innovation. So bringing all this together, again, is that it, it answers the question, what is the best uh, setup mm -hmm. to create fast and efficient innovation? that cost less, basically. And are you looking for new partners for, for this? Yeah, program? so we're going to announce uh, specific programs uh, on specific thematics again. So we want those thematics to be uh, highly um, disruptive. We want to, really to, to use this uh, black matter of innovation, let's say, uh, to, uh, to, um, to, to address problems that normally we don't in traditional labs because we don't have all the necessary tools and skills. So, for example, clearly here is how do we actually create new kind of uh, uh, diagnosis materials? Clearly, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a global problem here, access to medicine. Um, Bioproduction, as I showed you, it's, there is a huge space to, exp to explore. Or um, personal genomics, the exploration of yourself, of your own genome. We see a lot of different initi initiatives, but we believe that the best solution is you to actually get your own data and have all the skills and all the tools necessary on your computer to do that alone without the help of others. And, uh, it's, and then, I almost forgot, uh, but we collaborate, of course, a lot with designers. Mm -hmm. And most of the projects you saw here were made with, with um, with designers and biologists. So we clearly want to push this further and see how biology can take place in our society thanks to the skills of designers to um, address the good problems and, the, and make the good interface between these new kind of technologies and, and the users. Thank you very much.